you sit there with the uh, angry and you're not allowed, you know, uh, you've got a privacy thing until it becomes clear. But how far are we with that? With the, with the with CWU the, or with the CMA? Yeah, with the CWU oh, and both. the CMA. Right, okay. <laughs> with CWU, um, we are talking to them to try and talk to, them to try and find if there's a way forward. But in terms of where we are with the, with the actual pay claim, we're in no different a place than we ever have been. Uh, back, in April, back in April, the union are CWU are still absolutely insistent on three and a half percent for last year, three and a quarter percent for the year we're in, and an as yet unspecified amount for next year. Um, and we are still saying that given the 37 million pound loss that the Crown Network still has. Uh, our aspiration to get that to 23 million by the end of this financial year and to zero by the end of March 2015, that is completely unaffordable and unrealistic. The lump sums of £1,300, because you know you've already had £100 in May, or CW members had £100 in May, so the £1,300 for last year and the £1,000 for this year and the £1,000 for next year are still there on the table. Um, must be honest, it gets harder and harder to keep them on the table the longer and longer this goes on. Um, but they are still there, and if we could settle this dispute tomorrow, we would pay those in December, well, we would pay the 1300 in December's salaries. And it's, it's got to have a, such a knock on effect on everyone, the staff and the managers. Yeah. So it's not easy maintaining our routine as well whilst no, the strikes are just understand. being held. I absolutely really understand. Really, you've had to adjust your I don't days think it's off, the, your annual leave. Yeah. Um, and there are lots of other implications as well, isn't I, it? I don't think it's that we won't change. I think it's that we can't. But what we've tried to do all through this dispute is be honest and open and uh, upfront with people and transparent. And when we first met with the unit at the very beginning and said, we can offer £1,400 for the first year and £1,000, so £3,400 in total. We made it really clear this is, this is our best, this is genuinely all the money that is available. And therefore, there is nowhere for us to go. We cannot say, well, okay, then we'll make it £1,500, not, not £1,400, or whatever. There is no more money. Um, and we have tried and tried and tried to explain that point to uh, Andy and his representatives and his team, and we've kept putting that out in communications that we've sent out that Alana's team do uh, out to our to, to, to my staff, to, our, to your colleagues, to our colleagues. Um, so it's not that we won't change, we can't. We have given a commitment to government that we will get the Crown Network back to profit in March 2000, back to break even is what we've said, I think we'll get to profit in March 2015. And that's, that's not something that's negotiable. That's part of the 1.34 billion funding that they gave us two or three years ago. That was part of the commitment we had to give to get that funding. Now, we have equally said that we will return to consolidated pay rises in 2015-16 when the network is back to profit. We've even gone as far as to say, do you know, if we could accelerate that move back to profit and get there quicker, we'll do consolidated pay quicker. So the only thing that stops us offering consolidated pay is the fact that we're not making any money. We're not making a profit. Uh, once we get there, we will. If we can get there quicker than March 15, we'll do consolidated pay rises quicker than March 15. We regularly get feedback from a sizable number of staff who say actually they're sick of it. Um, they, they don't want to carry on. They want it to stop. They would like to accept the lump sum, but don't know how they go about it. Don't know how they get it. Well, the only way that we can pay the lump sum is for the dispute to be settled. So, I know I keep repeating myself, and I know Andy thinks I'm talking rubbish, but the only way is for CWU members of staff to tell the union that they want to accept the £1,300. Because until the union decide that they will accept it and the pay dispute is ended, we can't pay it. And the reason we can't pay it is because we have something called collective bargaining, which is a legally binding uh, way of settling pay. So if we just said, I'll tell you what, if you write in and tell us you want it, we'll send you a cheque, we'd be breaking the law, we'd be breaking the collective bargaining agreement because the dispute would not have been formally ended. Now, I know that there is a view in some staff's minds out in the network that actually the union will win, they'll get the pay rise, and what's more, we'll give back the money that they've lost by being on strike. I can absolutely guarantee you we will not be making back payments to people who've been on strike and have had pay deducted. We absolutely will not. And what's happening with the CMA? With the CMA, 
Um, I think it's fair to say we're in a very different place with the CMA. Uh, we are quite close. We've had some very, very constructive discussions with Brian uh, and his team. Um, and I'd like to think we're not too far away from being able to secure a deal with the CMA. Uh, and the lump sum payments that we've talked to managers and, and assistant managers about are still there to be paid. And if we can do a deal with the CMA, the same as I said about the CWU, we will pay those in your next pay packet if we can do a deal.